Okay. Just making sure we all three of them going. Yeah, I know you can. Yeah, it's like that. Okay. Yeah, and if anybody's on the comment board to listen, just let us know if we live too while we're checking right now. Bump the show. Get it, the Water Brothers, the Water Brothers. Hey, Shalom Makyam. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders, the great millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings and many salutations to you, elect Akyam, across the four winds of this earth, bringing this word out in truth and sincerity. I also want to say Shalom to the believers that are out there. All right, they might have um, particular roles in aiding certain prophets, mm -hmm. giving water or whatever the case might be. Shalom to y'all and Shalom to the few sincere sisters that are out there that ain't complete demons. Mm -hmm. All right, um, another day we're out here prophesying and um, the spirit uh, has it, um, you know, um, among the great men in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Shalom. Yeah, the brother, you know, brother came and visited us. The spirit allowed it to where, you know, we're able to fellowship. So the Lord willing, the video will be edifying and we're going to, you know, kind of just hop right into it. Con, so, con. Today, uh, within the sermon, we're going to go into pretty much um, the ark. All right, and we're going to pretty much go into what the ark actually is when you go into that word and how it plays a very, um, a very important significance within our walk being in this truth. You know, because growing up as children, we would hear ark and we automatically assume Noah's ark. You know, but we really didn't know anything about the Ark of the Testimony or none of that or what that word means for say. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go within this particular uh, particular topic and Lord within this edifying. All right, so um, we can start that off in the book of um, Exodus chapter 25, Bob Shaw. And really, since it's in verse 10, if we can start from the top. That'd be cool, Bob Shaw. Come, come. Okay, good. This is the book of Exodus chapter 25, starting at verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth, giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering. That's right. That's right. And um, Moses received this commandment. He had received the word on Mount Sinai, man, in the wilderness of Horeb or in the wilderness of Sinai. All right. And he actually communicated with the Lord face to face. Not that the Lord showed his face directly to him, but he had that direct relationship with the Lord. He's, he's called his friend. All right, so he was giving Moses particular commandment on what to do. And this commandment was pretty much for the children of Israel to pretty much give an offering unto the Lord. And that's what we do spiritually, man. We're on the altar, the highways and byways. We're giving an altar, uh, an offering right now upon the altar. Mm -hmm. And now what had stood out pretty much went into how he said you shouldn't do it grudgingly, loosely paraphrased. Yeah, All right, which shows you that we should be more than happy to be willing to do the work and serve one another, man. Yeah, kind. You when, know? When you, when you go to Romans, the 12th chapter, it say you make your body a living sacrifice. That's right, man. That's right. So, like, the brother was just going into, like, uh, so you had you had, to, you had to offer up an oblation, all right, back in, uh, you know, during the time of the Levitical priesthood. But now, what, what's the, the sacrifice that you do now? It's, it's ourselves. That's right. Same way how you how you shot. Our Lord and Savior offered up himself, all right? He was that perfect sacrifice, mm -hmm. all right? That's right. He was that right. perfect sacrifice. He was that lamb without blemish. All right, we're doing the same thing he did. It's just, like I said, it's just on a different level, all right? We're, um, Yahweh Shah physically uh, sacrificed sacrifice himself, but we're doing it spiritually, all right? That's why when you devote your time to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh when you go out there and doing videos and stuff like that, when you give yourself over into the uh, to the, uh, the spirit, all right, then that, that's you committing that, uh, that's you uh, committing yourself into the works of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and you, you're offering yourself up, man. All right, con, con. That's right. Verse three, and this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. Verse five, and ram skins dyed red and badger skins and shittim wood. Verse six, oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. Hey, you know, and the Lord ain't asking for this for no reason neither. Uh -huh. He ain't just saying, give me blue, this, give me oils, this, that, and the third. All these potato, uh, I'm sorry, play a particular role within the ministry, man. A lot of those things that was offered for the for the children of Israel were meant to help build up the temple as well uh -huh. and the tabernacle. Because again, the vision that the vision that the heavenly Father had given Moses when he was on Mount Sinai was an an exact physical replica 
of the the tabernacle that exists in the spirit world where Yahweh and Yahweh Shai dwell with all the angels, man. Oh. All right, so he's being very particular on what he wants the children of Israel to bring over there, and again, he considers it being an offering. Oh. All right, and this ain't insignificant either, man. The offering that we give, brothers, what we do, whether you're you're in a camp by yourself, whether you might be in a smaller city, or whether you're with the army. All right, it don't matter, man. It's significant. It plays a significant role when it comes to being a priest under the order of Melchizedek, man. Mm -hmm. All right, so don't think of yourself being insignificant in any way, form, or fashion, because Yahweh Shai said, if they if they love me and keep my words, not myself, but he says, my father and myself shall make our abode within them, man. And that's in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 23. And as we're going into the ark, we're going to get it, man. All right, Yahweh Shai represents that ark spiritually. And as we're reading, one second. As we're reading Exodus, the 25th chapter, all right, one of the things that he instructed Moses to build was the ark. That's why we're starting off in this verse. You got a precept, brother? Uh, okay, well, I had the one line up in John for a while. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right, con, con. Uh, did you want me to get it now? John 14? Uh, no, well, I, I can get the one in John 14. I had the one in John 20. Well, I get the one in John 14. Okay, yeah, we're we going to bring that one in John 20 out a little afterward. Con, con. But yeah, we can read John 14 and 23. Okay, Ron. This, uh, this, is, this is the book of John, chapter uh, 14, verse 23. And say, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him. And say, And we will come unto him and make uh, make our abode with him. And when you go into that word abode, that word abode means to dwell, man. Mm -hmm. All right, which shows you, hey, what did what did, what did, what did Stephen say in Acts the uh, in Acts the seventh chapter? All right, Stephen said pretty much. I think it's in Acts what seven and forty six. We don't got to get it, but it's in Acts seven, and Stephen makes yeah, the claim I mean, saying, The temple of the Lord is not built with hands. All right, the Heavenly Father, the Spirit of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai dwells within his men. And that's what makes us so much more separate than everybody else. Yeah, I mean, you, but what you, also you, comes you, with that separation, you, tribulation, you, going you, through you, things, man. In order to have the Heavenly Father Spirit and Yahweh Shai Spirit, Spirit dwelling in you, you got to be washed. All right, and the Holy Spirit that dwells in you is the is the key source of baptism, man. All right, because what did, what did John, the, uh, John the Baptist say? He said, I baptize with water, but he who, who comes after me, whose shoes I'm not worthy to fill, shall baptize you with what? fire and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, so within the Heavenly Father dealing with you, man, us making that offering, hey, man, he's dwelling within this temple, man. Mm -hmm. But with them dwelling within this temple, we need to make sure we constantly remind ourselves that we do offer up this sacrifice that's we're reading about in Exodus 25, mm -hmm. and that it is with joy, man, mm -hmm. because he, he didn't have to put his spirit within us. Yeah. All right, we could have been bugged out just like the people that you see all over the place, yeah, man. Yeah, These checks are through. You got it. Yeah, that's why I, I just want to say this too. To add on, that's why when you when you get, because I was just speaking to the brother about this. When you when you when you receive the Holy Spirit, man, it's the, the Spirit is supposed to I always hear uh, Elder Ariala speak about it. It's supposed to reinvigorate. Right. You know what I mean? You're right, supposed to right. you're supposed to get a uh, like a renewing a renewing of mind, like the Scripture right, speak about. Right. You're supposed to have that spirit of of uh, like, dang, man, Yahweh Shah coming back on his way. All right, and you're supposed to be uh, pretty much excited, not having that woe right. is me spirit right. like That's I right. speak about in, in the book of uh, Second Ezra's. Mm -hmm. All right, um, you're just supposed to be, like I said, reinvigorated, man. All right. That's well, right. I got a quick precept for you. Yeah, go, go, go. Right. That's cool. Yeah. This is the book of John, chapter 16, mm -hmm. and I'm going to start at verse, um, let's see, I'm going to start at verse 31. Mm -hmm. It says, Now Yahweh shall answer them, Do ye not believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, and is now come that ye shall be scattered every man in his own and shall leave me alone. And Yahweh Shah is pretty much speaking on the persecution that was gonna happen after he was delivered up to Pontius Pilate. Mm -hmm. All right, remember he would always let them know, look, I ain't gonna be with y'all long, man. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shah only had three years to really suck with those men mm -hmm. and they had to pretty much be on a level afterwards. Mm -hmm. And those men got simple on certain occasions, just like we all do get simple mm -hmm. on certain occasions. But the reason why I wanted to go into that as well, because as Yahweh Shah is speaking to the 12th, all right, we all represent that, his, his body, his disciples. Mm -hmm. So as he told them that hour is going to come where every man is going to be scattered in his own home, you read about the prophecies of what's going to take place in America. Mm -hmm. All right, what's, been, what's going to befall upon this place and the state of mind that we're going to have to be in being men of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's times where we're not, we might not be able to see each other, man. Mm -hmm. It talks about in 2nd um, Ezra 16 where it says, one man shall not enter into another city. Mm -hmm. So there's going to come a time where we ain't going to be able to just travel along. We're going to be scattered. We ain't going to be, we ain't going to be amongst the brethren. It might be certain brothers the spirit might have you linked with and y'all are doing whatever, man. Mm -hmm. But it's going to come a time, just like as it came with Yahweh Shai, he said you're going to be scattered out, man. And he's talking about that persecution. It's a little more. Yeah, go ahead. It says, um, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, and it's come, that he shall be scattered every man in his own, and mm -hmm. shall leave me alone, 
and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. Mm -hmm. So he understood the fact that the Heavenly Father was with him because mm -hmm. he was speaking pertaining to his own persecution as well. Mm -hmm. And just as Yahweh spoke pertaining to his own persecution as well, knowing the Father is with him, all right, as we're going through certain things, being afflicted, being baptized mm -hmm. by that fire, we got to understand that the spirit of the Father and Yahweh Shai is within us as well, man. Mm -hmm. All right? It's, I'm sorry. It's a little more. No, 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 no,
Christianity, all right, they don't have the Holy Spirit dealing with them, so they can't receive the spirituality within it uh. and understanding how that water represents the word, man. Uh. All right, like King David made this statement pretty much in Psalm 51. It says, wash me with water mm -hmm. that I may be clean. Exactly. But David wasn't dumped into no water, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. This is, this is this is true. Yeah, he said, Lord, please take not your Holy Spirit from me, man. Nah, bro. So he had understanding what the Holy Spirit was, brother, and you've been holding some for a minute. Oh, no, no, I got <laughs> the Spirit switching up a little bit, but I got some. Come on, come on, brother. Okay, come on. This is the book of John, chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 5. Yahweh shall ask her, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, that except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm. Verse 6 That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Yeah, because it's like if I can just yeah, interject yeah, real yeah, quick, because yeah, yeah. that he was going into the uh, which, which mo most brothers are familiar with the, uh, the, that chapter is he was he was talking to Nicodemus mm -hmm. and he was trying to explain to him like what what it meant to get actually be re re reborn, all right? Because right. Nicodemus asked that question, said, "Can a man enter into uh, to the womb with Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he had to he had to he had to rebuke him, all right, or he had to correct that correct him, and he was pretty much telling like, "No, you you get reborn by what the, the spirit." That's right. Because That's when right. we all before we came to the truth, like we we was dead, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Then when we receive when we once we received the word, we was quickened, like the scriptures mm -hmm. speak about, and now now that's that process of you sharing the old man all right that's the right. nigga that you, that you right. once was and you're starting to become renewed in mind that's man. right and that's what that's what was being explained right there in that chapter God. You go ahead. i'm just gonna bring up this last verse this go seven ahead. marvel not that i said unto thee he must be born again yeah mm -hmm. yeah so he said don't don't marvel not man all right that's why even when you get to the process and when you get on the highways and byways when we telling jake that you actually have to literally change your way of living and doing doing particular things all right stop eating pork cut out the uh you know the adultery and so forth and so on jake jake it's a, it's a hard thing for jake but we know it's not it's not a cold turkey thing right. this is a process right. to where it, it happens over time that's right that, gone gone um, was that that was it on that one? Uh, Did you have anything? Because right, we can jump back to the Exodus twenty five. We can jump back to Exodus. Yeah. Okay, come okay, on, come on. Going back into Exodus twenty five, I think it's verse seven. Um, it says okay. Exodus twenty five, verse seven. Onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod. Hey, and the Spirit has us getting back into the stones come too, come man. Come on, all right, just as a little footnote. Yeah. All right, so we're, hey, man, the, the Heavenly Father did a beautiful thing to us, man. He had gave us the lyrics to the song again, and he had gave us back things pertaining to our inheritance, which was what, what was ours from the foundations of the earth. All right, so Yahweh said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. All right, so since Yahweh has overcome the world, we've overcame the world, and we've received everything else back. Yeah. We just got to play our part out of tribulation, persecution, and, you know, as we're down here, but Yahweh said, look, you already good, man. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is offer up yourselves as a sacrifice, mm -hmm. and yeah. you good, man. Yeah. And do it with cheer. Yeah. Man, yeah. we got the name back, brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah God. I, what? That's the that's thing you don't take lightly. When you, when you, once you receive that name, man, Come like, on. It, 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 when you receive the name, you see your inheritance of who you are as a person, who you understand the, the dynamics of what your Yahweh Shai is going on. Mm -hmm. You don't look back, man. Right. All right, you continue right. pushing forward no matter what the hell happened. Because a lot of brothers, what happens is, when, when 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 the Lord starts to apply that spiritual pressure, Jake fold and they right. they they look at it like, oh, this is not worth it. Right. I'm, I'm not doing this that and right. third. Right. But you got to continue pushing forward, man. That's right, brother. You got to knock. Come, come. No, you good, brother. You good, brother. I'm gonna bring you back. Um, Exodus 25 and 7. Mm -hmm. uh, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod mm -hmm. and in the breastplate. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. And that ephod is something spiritual too, man, because that was taken away from as well. All right, when you go into that ephod, man, that ephod was a chest piece, all right, that was pretty much um, attached to the high priest's mantle. All right, and that ephod represented um, symbolically the 12 tribes of Israel. Oh, That's why on that ephod there were 12 different stones, and the high priest had wore that on his shoulders, mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. which Yahweh Shai spiritually represents the high priest anyway. Oh. And you read it in Isaiah the ninth chapter, the sixth verse, where it gives Yahweh Shai these different titles, but it also says, um, you know, he shall bear the government upon his shoulders, man. Oh. All right, which is spiritual about um, the high priest in that ephod, because what the high priest was bearing upon his shoulders, the, the the weight of Israel, because what the high priest had to offer up sacrifice for the, for the sins of the nation, man. All right, so he had to bear it. All right, go ahead, Ark. Verse eight, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Go ahead. Verse nine, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle. And the, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. There you go. He said after the pattern of the tabernacle, meaning that it was mimicked after something that already exists in the heavens, man. All right, and that's also spoken of in the book of Hebrews as well. 
where it goes into that pattern, man. All right? So Moses is receiving information and instruction on how the Heavenly Father wanted the tabernacle it set up on the planet Earth as in heaven. All right? Hey, that's why it says in Matthew 6, chapter, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we're playing his will out on the planet Earth because when he had Moses physically setting those things up, that was nothing but a similitude of what we're all doing right now. And then when we get those new bodies, we're all going to be back in tune with the Heavenly Father and His Son and all the angels. All right? Go ahead, brother. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It says, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. This is the key point right here. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubic and a half the height thereof. Very deep, very detailed description of how he wanted that ark made. Now, would you be able to go into that word ark, Baba Kashaw, there in the blue letter? Oh God, it's um, H seven two seven. All wrong, all wrong. Let's see here. Yeah, it says. Uh, it says. It says. Aran. Mm -hmm. and, and then it says Arayan beside it. But yeah, yeah, Aran, yep. Aran. Um, in the sense of gathering a box, art, chest, coffin. Okay, it says art, chest, a coffin. But when you go into the nitty gritty on what the word arc actually represents, all right, the arc also represents what, what a bridge is. That's why when you, let's say, if you're traveling, or if the brothers that are in Missouri, the brothers that have been to St. Louis, you know, there's Akim down there. All right, you have what's called the ark that there, that's there. And it ain't no box or no chest, okay. all right? But it's like from one end to another, mm -hmm. like McDonald's, which we don't mess with. Okay. But using the example, golden you have what's arch. called the golden arches, mm -hmm. you know? And even the rainbow that you see is, is considered an arch mm -hmm. or an ark, mm -hmm. all right? And when you go into that ark, what an ark actually represents is a bridge, mm -hmm. all right? It's a bridge to get to from one point to another. Right. I'll say it, and that's with Yahweh Shai. Because remember, Yahweh Shai is the Right. So, you know, we always had, we always had, you know, look at it uh, parabolically too, the Levites. The Levites was looked at that bridge when you go to the Deuteronomy 18 chapter. They was the middleman before, you know, Yahweh Shai came on the scene. You had, in order for you to go through, uh, get to uh, Yahweh, uh, you had to go through what? The Levitical priesthood. When you did it, when you sinned, or you did, you need uh, a trans a trans a trans trespass offering, all right, a uh, meat offering, bird offering, you had to go through the, 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 the Levites, the Levitical priest. And then when Yahweh Shah came on the scene, like the brothers wanted to, he was that, he was that, that bridge, all right, or that ark, all right, he was that bridge to get back to the, the Heavenly Father and the Son. All right, God, I got a quick one real quick. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. This is the book of uh, Hebrews chapter seven, and really the whole chapter goes very heavy on how Yahweh Shah is our, is our um, new high priest. Mm -hmm. All right, because as the brother made the beautiful statement going into it was the priest, it was the priesthood that represented those middlemen and those mediators to get back into the Lord. That's why you had to wash yourself a certain amount of times. That's why when he went into the holiest of holies, when the high priest sat on the uh, when he when he sat on the mercy seat, he received that divine instruction from the Lord. But he had particular stones he had to wear, a particular garment he had to wear, which is you know our garments are spiritual and it's our mind. God. All right, and the stones, hey, are we not lively stones? Exactly. All right, so we represent all these things pretty much at the end of the day. Yahweh Shai represented to the represented to the whole. Mm -hmm. And as that high priest sat in the holiest place to judge, that was a symbolic representation of who Yahweh Shai is to us, man. God. All right, because the Levitical priesthood came after. Mm -hmm. All right, before you had what? A a a who did Abraham pay tithes into? Melchizedek, man. Mm -hmm. And this is what Hebrews talks about when Levi was still in Abraham's loins, man. So what the Heavenly Father had mapped out and given unto Moses was an example of something that already exists, man. That's why it says in the book of Genesis 49 and 10, I believe, it says, uh, it says, I'm out of Judah shall not, uh, shall not um, depart a lawgiver. Huh. All right. Loosely paraphrasing. Huh. And I had a quick piece of about the shot because you said you made a statement. You said, um, like you said, we have the spiritual garments, stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Uh, about the uh, one of the Levitical priesthood, one of the Levit Levites, excuse me, had to right. go into the, uh, the, uh, the two, uh, the two, uh, uh, Excuse me, uh, the two um, the veils. Yeah, the veils. Mm -hmm. All right, they had to be dressed a certain way, right? Right. right so this right. is uh, Levitic, Leviticus chapter sixteen, uh, verse. I will start from verse uh, four. It says, "He shall put on the holy coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. And he shall be girded with a linen girdle, and with the linen mitri. It says, shall he be uh, attired? These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash. It says, therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, and, and so put them on." It say uh, he shall take he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two goats of the coats 
for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And if I may, really quick, mm -hmm. it goes into how he had to wash himself before he had put that linen on, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we mentioned earlier, again, through baptism, yeah, yeah. that's how we're spiritually being Time washed, man. There, right? Yeah, <laughs> hey, when, when you go into Psalms 51, mm -hmm. and when King David says, wash me that I may be clean, mm -hmm. when you go into our ancient culture, he mm -hmm. wasn't just talking about, you know, when you think of washing, you God. think maybe throwing something in the washing machine or maybe even putting it in the, in the water and mm -hmm. washing it. Mm -hmm. But when you go into our ancient culture, the ancient way of washing was very, very, very particular in the ancient world, man. Yeah. Because you had a particular cloth that you had. Mm -hmm. And you had, when you research it, you had to stack that cloth or that garment mm -hmm. upon a flat stone. Mm -hmm. All right. Before you did that, you had to dump it in water. And there was also a supplement that was with it, which is called a nitri. And you read about it in Jeremiah 2 and 22, where he says, wash yourselves with nitri. Mm -hmm. All right. And also Job, that too, the second chapter of Job. that's the spirit, that's yeah. the spirit. <laughs> and also in the book of Job, Job considers it being called snow water. Mm -hmm. But when you go into that, that's pretty much a soapy material mm -hmm. that you would put in the water and you would dump your cloth in or your garment in mm -hmm. and you would set it upon that stone and you would literally beat it to death mm -hmm. because you had to strike it, strike it, strike it and hit it in order for that oil and everything to come out, man. Uh -huh. And that's we're going into washing ourselves, being those priests, putting mm -hmm. on these new garments. Mm -hmm. The only way to be that new man is for that old man to be beaten up out of you, man. You go. All right, and that's that washing that we're taking place. And then in order for the Lord to dwell with you, which is what we're getting, which, we, which we're leading up to, mm -hmm. all right? It, the only way for his spirit to dwell in you is you have to be clean, man. Mm -hmm. So having his spirit, you have a whole nother burden that's going to have to carry, man, and that's being afflicted, man, God. because he's making us clean with his blood and with his spirit being within us, man. God. All right, you got something? No, I'm going to go, man. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, so I was looking for that one in uh, James, the second chapter, about the uh, the nitrate. Oh, like, uh, it's in Jeremiah 2 and 22. Con -con. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. It says, For though thou wash thee with nitrate and take thee much soap, Yet thy iniquity is marked before me, said the Lord hey, Yahweh. Baba Kashaw, if you can, pull up Malachi the third chapter and you can start at the second verse. I'm sorry, yeah, read, you, that, you really, I, read that one more time. Baba Baba Kashaw. Kashaw. James chapter, I mean, Jeremiah, excuse me, Salakia. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22. Mm -hmm. if they, for, though thou, for though thou wash thee with nitrate and take thee much soap, yet thy iniquity is marked before me, said the Lord Yahweh. Because Jake was wicked, man. So he, it was a point, con, con, con. It was a point where Jake, you know what I'm saying? Jake was offering up wax sacrifices, and he's pretty much like y'all was already through. You know, there was a period of time where we was done as a nation of people, man. All the prophets said, y'all were going to have to be cut off, and the name of the Lord is going to be amongst you no more. Salawam, brothers. Salawam. Hey, one sec, brothers. Hey, it's more brothers coming too. Y'all about to me on the side, brothers. Salawam. Y'all about to me on the side, brothers. Salawam, brothers. Y'all about to me on the side, brothers. Salawam, brothers. I'm doing it for myself, man. Con. We're just leaving off. We're just throwing them Jeremiah 2 and 22 right now, going into water, going into baptism, pretty much, and how the Spirit of the Lord dwells within us. And in order for that Spirit to be with us, we have to be clean. All right. So, um, so we were in Jeremiah 2 and 22, and we just read that, and he had went into pretty much um with soap. All right. You got that um in um you got that in um, Malachi the third chapter. All right, Baba Kashaw, you can actually start at the top. Book right. of Malachi, chapter three, starting at verse one. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And that was John the Baptist he's talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. And later on, that actually happened with Elder Abba Bivens as well, man. Uh -huh. All right. Because you read about it in Malachi, the fourth chapter, where he says he's going to send Elijah the prophet back before the great and dreadful day. Yeah, con. All right. Which we, we know that being, uh, you know, um, uh, Elder uh, Abba Bivens. Abba Bivens. All right. You know what I mean? He, he, because he was the. He was the, uh, the pretty much the forerunners that was gonna get us back on track. That's right, you know what I mean? That's right. And then that through him, through that man, uh, High Priest Abba Bivens, all right, you had uh, High Priest, uh, High Priest uh, Ar uh, Arya. Arya, yep. No, not Arya, uh, uh, King Marshall? No, King Marshall, then the, um, uh, what was High Priest Jaikwab? High Priest Jaikwab, then, uh, yeah, Ar okay, uh, Arya. Arya, yeah, excuse me, yeah, High Priest Arya. Yes, yeah, like it. And then through them, I right, came our apostles, the elders, uh, Great Millstone, mm -hmm. Apostle Tar from Apostle uh, uh, Ramla, Apostle Bakar, and so forth and so on. Come. That's why you got that uh, when you read in the book of Ezekiel, the 47 chapter, it talked about the waters, how it started off from the ankles, and then it started to get to the uh, the, uh, the knees and then the loins, and then it, it got to a point where it spread it out so far that not, that's how that was parabolic to the truth. Come. The truth started off, you know, in small uh, small portions, then it, now, it's, now you got cats popping up literally that's all right, over the place. Right. Everywhere. Um, yeah, you go, 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 uh, and then you can continue in there, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeremiah 23 and 3, it said, And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them 
and I will bring them again to their foes, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Right, and that's and that's exactly what's happening right now, man. All right, the Lord, He's bringing us back to our foes. All right, He's He, he Kwam Yasharala, man. He's, right, he's, he's He quickened us with the Spirit, and then now He's bringing us back to the fold, man. All right, right. that that Lord always spoke about that remnant returning. All right, and that remnant has always been there from the from literally from the uh, beginning of time. That's right. All right. You had that remnant of our people that was always with the ways and at ways and uh, of Yahweh by Shimei mm -hmm. and then you always had the two thirds. Because sometimes Jake look at it like two thirds just pop up like no right. two thirds them them the niggas oh, been there man especially when you understand the uh after the elect. yeah right. man yeah that's right it was that's always right. it was always uh conflicting with the elect man while every time we was in uh no matter what kingdom we was in the, the elect always was trying to get the hell up out of that kingdom mm -hmm. and preach the downfall of that place and then you always had the two thirds like when you go back to the uh, time of Moses niggas you know the cucumbers and the leeks mm -hmm. and all the other shit yeah, that's right the niggas that's always right. wanted to stay there man and, and right. it happened in each and every kingdom man that's right yeah. God. hold on listen to this let me get this oh, last one all right this verse four it said and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking said the Lord hey and that that ties right into what we're reading in Matthew the third chapter man because really the first shepherd out of the new wave that came was elder Abba Biffins man right. and then he had fruit under that and then they had fruit under that which is our apostles Con. and then we're here now man mm -hmm. so we had to be fed with this word but being fed with this word was what's spoken of as pertaining to it. It talks about it's going to be sweet as honey, but deep down it's going to get bitter. And right. that's that washing that takes place, that that's bitterness right. being clean, mm -hmm. that purification, mm -hmm. that separation, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, it's a tough process, mm -hmm. you know, but it's got to get done. Yeah, All right. Somebody, somebody, hey, somebody, somebody got to do it. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, somebody got to get dirty. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, right. hey, any of us could be doing anything around this time of the day on the weekends when brothers go out. But the Heavenly Father had set us to the side from everybody else and put garments on us and allowed us to preach his word and offer him sacrifice with joy, man. Right. And within that, hey, we have a strong chance of salvation, man. All right, now we understand we don't know if we're elect, we don't know who we are in the spirit, but we, we always say, we don't know, hey, I'll put it like this, look at what else Jake doing out here, man. So we got a hell of a chance of that's being right, those brother. men. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, you yeah. like, you got something. Yeah, I do got Con, something. okay. Con, this Con. is Proverbs chapter 17, Matter of fact, I got verse three. three. Okay, okay. The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. So yeah, man, just like the brother was alluding on, the Lord is going to put us through that bitterness, all right? That's the trying of our faith, the trying of our minds that we remain faithful within Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shem Yahweh beautiful point, brother. Khan, that, that ties in right what we read here, what we're about to read here in uh, Malachi, the third chapter. You know? Go ahead, I. Um, it says, And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, mm -hmm. even the messenger of the covenant. Even the messenger of the covenant. Go ahead. Whom ye delight in. All right, all right. The messenger of the covenant whom we delight in, man. And is that not Yahweh Shai? Mm -hmm. All right, Yahweh Shai is the messenger of the covenant. All mm -hmm. right, because what's the messenger, man? That's a priest. Uh -huh. The priest was the messenger as well, and that's spoken of in Matthew, this is the second, I'm sorry, Malachi, the second chapter. Mm -hmm. All right, it says, out of the priest's lips to keep knowledge, for he is the messenger of the Most High. Uh -huh. All right, and Yahweh Shai is the ultimate messenger that, hey, what? Like we were going into, man, we went into how the high priest represented that mediator mm -hmm. and we had to go to the high priest and offer up sacrifice for us to get back in good terms with the lord mm -hmm. all right now we're not offering up no goat or no lamb or whatever but we offer up ourselves man that's right and what do you put what the what what does that sacrifice have to go into in order for it to be deemed as a worthy sacrifice it has to be set in the fire mm -hmm. all right it has to be on the altar mm -hmm. and it has to be set in the fire mm -hmm. which again yahweh shy is his spirit is like unto that fire and mm -hmm. john the baptist even talked about that mm -hmm. all right go ahead I behold he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 2. Uh huh. But who may abide the day of his coming? Who may abide the day of his coming? All right, because you got a lot of people that are around that'll be like, yeah, let me leave the Lord is coming back, but their actions don't show. Kind, bro. They through, man. Scriptures say, what manner of man, and what manner of man you supposed to be in, man? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's Kinda. right. And whatever points, brother Scott, mm -hmm. slot. Go ahead. You got it right out. You want to say yeah, something? Yeah, whatever point you got, do your thing. Second floor. You want to? Yeah, get, get it out if you can. You got it. You got it out. Why? Why find it? Okay, okay. We're pretty much going into it, man. It says, "Who may abide in that day?" All right. And um, I know you're getting that precept, but um, if we could finish this up and then we could jump to that one right there. All right, because it's going to be a very fearful day, man. A lot of people think of the day of Lord and they think it's going to be unicorns mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying? He's going to come back riding on my little pony. Uh, all right. Well, that's not the case. Uh, all right. You know, he's going to come back in a very 
wrathful, fearful fashion, man. It's a reason why he's called the God Almighty when you read it. Mm -hmm. When you go into that word God Almighty, it's Allah shot you, mm -hmm. man. All right, which means to destroy in a very devastating fashion. Kind. All right, go ahead. I it says, and who shall yeah, stand? The camera just a little bit. It's a little crooked. And who shall stand what? when he appear? Who shall stand when he appear? Mind you, when the spirit of the Lord gets closer to this place, man. You remember when the angel came down? All right, to the sepulcher. It's a sepulcher. It said it was an earthquake that had taken place mm -hmm. when that one angel came mm -hmm. down. So imagine when the Lord comes back on that giant mountain that Ezra describes it, that giant chariot mm -hmm. with the rest of the hosts, mm -hmm. including the 144,000. And we already got the missiles that's already going to be shooting off. Mm -hmm. It talks about an Isaiah that the earth shall shake and rock to and fro like a drunken yeah, man. Yeah, All right, so yeah. you try to stand up there in the temple in no magnitude mm -hmm. earthquake, it's going to be dang near virtually impossible, man. But he's asking the question saying, who shall stand in that day? Go mm -hmm. ahead, huh? For he is like a refiner's fire. He is like a refiner's fire. There's that baptism again. Mm -hmm. All right, but this is the point that I wanted that's coming up. And like fuller's soap. It says like fuller's soap. We read Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 22 earlier when he says, wash you with nitri and be clean. And he went into that soap as well. Mm -hmm. All right, and again, I ex explained the process of getting that garment, that ancient form of washing material back then. Mm -hmm. You didn't just dump it in water and just wring it up. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to literally dump it in water you know, and you had to put a particular um soap like a like it was called nitri, but it was more so like so like mm -hmm. soda. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying with the fizz. Mm -hmm. All right, as it was sitting in there, you had to literally put it on the stone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, people got a club. Mm -hmm. You know, and they would beat it mm -hmm. against the stone Time. because when it gets beaten, it gets stricken. It causes it to foam up. And mm -hmm. it gets all that grease and that gunk written mm -hmm. out, man. Mm -hmm. All right. And the person that does that, what they're called is a fuller. Fuller. That's actually what it's called. When you go into a fulling, the process of fulling, it's an ancient process of washing clothes, which goes, and it's, it takes hours to do, by the way. It ain't just no five minute process. It's called fulling, where they take it up there and beat it among the stone. Time. And Yahweh's side represents that stone, but it says he is like a fuller's soap. All right. So his spirit is the only thing that can get us clean. And that process of being washed and being baptized is a very process where we getting beat. Mm -hmm, afflicted mm -hmm. this that and the third but he mm -hmm. said that's what he desires a contrite mind and a mm -hmm. broken spirit you mm -hmm. got it brother <laughs> I had to hey, get that out hey, right you locked in that out, no man. you good I you locked in bro <laughs> <laughs> I got a precept today this yeah, time about it. Luke uh, chapter 9 I'm gonna start uh, at verse 21 and he straightly charged uh, them and commanded them to tell no man that that thing verse 22 saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised mm -hmm the third day yeah verse 23 and he said to them all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's right and, mm -hmm. and denying yourself and taking up that cross mm -hmm. a lot of these people think you walking around wearing a cross and you good right walking with that cross around mm -hmm. your chest looking crazy with that with that mm -hmm. phallus right there man mm -hmm. all right well naturally no man he means that you're gonna have to go through the straight gate mm -hmm. and part of that straight gate man goes into being beaten and stricken mm -hmm. All right, and, and and you know we go through things as we're in as we're in the, as we're in the truth. We go through things mentally. Demons mess with you. You know we're beacons of light, but being beacons of light, everything sees you mm -hmm. on the right side and the left side. Mm -hmm. And the scriptures talk about how he had mingled a perverse spirit among Egypt, man. So it's a lot of perverseness that looks at you, that try to get you caught up in that BS, man. Mm -hmm. That try to get you greasy again from the cleanness that you already have, yeah, man. Time. That's why that process of fulling takes so much time, man. Yep. And he says he's a he's, he shall refine he was fired, and he shall be as a fuller soap. Meaning we here for a minute for a period of time, but man, we gonna constantly go through it until we clean the only way for the lord's spirit to dwell within you the only way that we're able to dwell with the spirit of the lord it has to be in a clean vessel man you have to be a clean conduit i got a real quick real con, quick. Con, con. psalms chapter 51 verse 7 purge me with hyssop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow there you go all right and remember david transgressed heavily right there man so with him saying wash me when you go into that word i believe that word there is kabas when you go into that word in the Hebrew wash. And when you go into that word kabas, it goes into the process of filling. So David knew the process of filling, how it had to get beaten for hours instead the third. So he was like, Lord, if I gotta go through it, I gotta go through it. Because he knew the transgressions. He wasn't just saying, just wash me, which he was, but he was speaking on a whole process that's tedious. It takes time and it's a very, um, to a degree, I don't wanna say brutal because well, you're brutalizing the cloth pretty much. You know what I'm saying? So that's, he was putting his mind his mind state in the position of that cloth that needs to get washed and beaten for that grease to come out, man. It's uh, Ephesians 5 and 22. 
-hmm. and that you put off concerning the form of conversation. Break it down, about the show. The old man, which is corrupt according to the defiled lust, and mm. be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after the most high is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to put up the old man of things so I, I, I would say, I, that you used to do all the lust of the world, man. That's you right. put on the spirit, man. That's right. Because to be caught out of this death, man, to be spiritual out of this life everlasting. That's right, brother. That's right. I, that was it. God, that goes hand in hand with Second Ezra 14, where it says, put off the weak nature, man. All right. All right. You had a precept, brother? Oh, no, no, it kind of switched. Kinda okay. Switched. Okay. Con, con, that's a bet. That's a bet. Well, we oh, go ahead, brother. Like go you back, got something too. Go back to Bible. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, a little, keep reading on and that. Remember, y'all never brought the one in John the twentieth. Oh yeah, we going hell yeah. Hell <laughs> yeah. The book of Malachi, um, verse three. Malachi chapter three, verse three. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. Why does it say he shall purify the sons of Levi, man? Because we know that's not physically talking about the priesthood no more. All right, you look over there in the patients, man. They over there eating dookie pies and tripping, cutting off chicken heads, man. Doing witchcraft. Doing witchcraft, yeah. So you know they ain't talking about the sons of Levi, but he's talking about something spiritual. When you go into the name Levi, it means joint unto me. And the ones who's joined unto him are separated or sanctified or cleansed is the priesthood. All right, and we represent the priesthood right now spiritually. So when he talks about purifying the sons of Levi, he's talking about us, man, because we represent the priest today. All right, did you have a point, brother? Okay, con, con. Yeah, man, we represent those priests today. All right, and what did he say? He shall purify them as silver is, is purified, man. That's the same thing the Lord spoke on us, man. All right, it talks about the fiery trial of our faith. All right, it talks about being tried as gold in the fire, man. And that's in, uh, what, Zechariah 13. All right, as a matter of fact, if um, I can get it, I'll get that in Zechariah 13, Bob Kashaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, Sirach 201 as well. That's right, that's right. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 13. Salak, your brothers. Hey, yeah, yeah. Um, yep, this is Zechariah 13 and 8. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land set the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. And we understand that ain't talking about everybody. That's talking about the one third, mm -hmm. the elect. Mm -hmm. But out of that particular bulk of men, you have 144,000 prophets that are considered the sons of Levi nope. that you read about in the book of uh, Malachi, the third chapter. But you read it in Revelation 14, mm -hmm. And it says 12,000 out of each tribe, mm -hmm. which shows you that was a similitude or an example mm -hmm. of what we were reading in Malachi, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. All right. He's talking about the sons of Levi are going to be the ones that are going to be washed by this fuller, mm -hmm. by this fuller soap. Try it through that fire. Be tried as silver. Mm -hmm. All right. Go ahead, brother. You good, brother. Yeah, man. And it's the thing. In order for that to happen, man, with the spirit of the Lord dwelling in you, man, with, with us carrying him, literally, really, really, he's carrying us. Kind of All right. There's a go. certain way we got to conduct ourselves, man. Mm -hmm. Whenever we go through certain things, we ain't supposed to have that woe is me spirit all yeah. the time. Get it? We go through things. Yep. We men, we're afflicted. The scriptures say to complain continually unto him. Yeah. But at the same time, you don't want to do it to the point where you're taking all your goodness and the joy that you have in your house shy away, man. Kind. All right. The, scri the scriptures say whatsoever is brought upon you, take it like cheerfully, sure. man. Come on, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> and also, and also when, you, when you think about uh, when Saul came God, into the truth, when Ananias yeah. couldn't understand how Saul came into the truth, what yeah. the Lord say, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to show him great things he must suffer. Right. 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 Paul went through everything he went through. There you man. go. I am here, brother. Y'all the spirit. Man. Once the tribulation, thou shalt enter into the kingdom. Man. There you go. I can't. Yeah. And the brother said, he said a precept to it. Oh, you got a precept? Con, con. So, Rock well, chapter 2, I'm verse 1. Oh, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Mm. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Mm -hmm. And make not haste in the time of trouble. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. make All right, just, it just to select nah, it, brother. You got it, brother. And just to say something because uh, the scriptures, you said, when you cut us so the Lord prepared, they sold to be tempted. Tempted, yeah, basically. Yeah, you're going to be tempted in this truth, man. The that's scriptures right. say when you depart from evil, you make up yourself a prey. That's right. right. Yeah, All right, so yeah, demons yeah. is constantly that's attacking. Right, All right, so hey, man, you know, you might, and then also when the Lord tempts you, all right, you might go off. 
All right, but then he might come back and tip you the same way again to see how your reaction goes. There you right? go. Yep, right. so you gotta, you gotta make sure your your spirit is working there, man. Yeah, kind. Right. Yeah, that's why it's Chris say constantly. You gotta examine thyself and see if that was being the truth. That's right. right. Man, you gotta examine yourself. That's right, brother. Did you have more on that one? Yeah, just a little bit more. Con. It says, "Cleave unto him and depart not away, mm -hmm. that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, that's right. take cheerfully." And be patient without our change to a lower state. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it says cleave unto him, man. All right, cleave unto him and depart not away. Just like it says in, in the book of Psalms, kiss the sun, least he be angry, man. Yeah. All right, the only way to cleave unto him and kiss the sun is taking this like a man. Yeah. All right, the prophet Isaiah said, make yourselves as men. Mm -hmm. All right, and what's he talking about? He ain't just talking about these men that you see out here. Mm -hmm. All right, but he's talking about men of war. Mm -hmm. The Heavenly Father, it's written in Exodus 15, it says, the Lord is a man of war, mm -hmm. Yahweh is his name, man. Uh -huh. So with him being a man of war, what's he girding you up to be? A soldier, mm -hmm. making yourself a man. Mm -hmm. Having to go through these things, man, but also too being purified and set apart. Mm -hmm. As is that, and again, that's why he said, "Cause the sons of Levi." Mm -hmm. That word Levi literally means to be set apart, man. Mm -hmm. It means to be joint unto. Mm -hmm. So when you're joint unto the Lord, you're set apart from everybody else. Mm -hmm. And back then, he also considered the Levites being his gift. Yeah. All right. The only difference is it ain't just talking about Levi. Right. All right. That's spiritually talking about the elect, man. Yeah. And we are a gift unto the face of this earth. Just like Yahweh was a gift when he came down, mm -hmm. being our high priest. He's up in the heavens, but what? He still dwells with us. His spirit's in us, which makes us gifts here. Mm -hmm. And the Heavenly Father put the spirit on James to talk about that in James, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. He said every good gift and every perfect gift come from above from the Father right of light. Here. That's the spirit, <laughs> Come on. Let's come on with it. it. Yeah, get in, spirit, get in there. Right? <laughs> Load it up. Pull it yeah, out. Might as well get it. Yeah. yeah. You can start at verse 16, James 1 and 16. <laughs> okay, let's go. Cool. Book of James chapter 1, verse 16. Do not err, my beloved brother. Every good gift and even perfect gift is from above. Yeah, and there's a lot of things you can err from because you can be going through so many things. You forget the fact that the Lord's spirit is on you, man. Mm -hmm. You catch yourself complaining so much. Mm -hmm. A lot of Jake fell off the truth due to tribulation. Huh. All right. The gray areas. Gray areas, man. <laughs> Do not err. And it's a lot of Jake's even that know they Israelites that yeah. are out there in these other camps. Mm -hmm. They err, man. Yeah. All right, you got that dude from one body in your house shot talking about your house shot ain't do miracles. Mm -hmm. He ain't walk on water. He ain't turn water yeah. into wine. Yeah. That's, what, uh, that's blasphemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right, man. Hey, the Lord is going to deal with people like that, man. But hey, we have those guys as examples of how not to be and how not to err. Did you have a point you was going to make? Yeah, no, I was about to say you can use that one scripture where it say, uh, the Lord said, all these miracles uh, that I do shall do also. Right, right. Like, so that, so what was the miracles he was referring exactly. to? You know what I mean? Exactly. Come on, man. Even Christians, even Christians know that yeah. their miracles right. done. Yeah. yeah. And then also scripture talked about, he said it was, uh, it's, he said there was uh, so many miracles the Lord did, it wasn't written. It wasn't. Right. <laughs> Come that's on, right. man. That's that's right. Right. Like, I'll faith, paraphrase man. it. That's Excuse right, me, Akio. Right. Goes back to faith, man. Like, people don't have no faith, man. Mm -hmm. All right, they don't have the faith, man. Mm -hmm. But hey, the brother, what the brother was reading, you know, basically, you know, you got to, like the a brother said, that a lot of brothers fell out the truth due to tribulations. Mm -hmm. All right. And you got to you gotta go revert back. You got to go back to those scriptures. You got to go back to Job. Mm -hmm. All right. right. Daniel and Alliance. Hey, the scriptures mm -hmm. to rock the second chapter say, they got a generation of old. That's have right. ever called, have that's any ever Lord. called on my name and was yeah, forsaken, exactly. man? Exactly. Right. So you got to think Lord. back. That's why the Lord got you know, certain stories in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So you can be like, wow, the Lord made yeah. delivered them. Faith you know? boosters. Right. Faith and you got to understand some of those people are back today. So that's you got to, right. you might be one of those people. Right. That's right. All right. That's right. Beautiful point, brother. This thing is about faith, man. If you don't have faith, you're done. All right, and that's also pleasing unto the heavenly Father. All right, it's written in Hebrews the eleventh chapter, man. I, I want to grab that. Yeah. Well, we can we can continue with James, you know. what I'm saying that we can get that in Hebrews, and we can bring a few more because I was gonna bring up the Ark of the Covenant, and then we can end, end off. You yeah, know, ka -ka, yeah, because you know brothers be here all night, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I say the squad came through. Ka -ka, you know, yeah. That's more bodies and more talking. Re Reinforcement. Yeah. You know, like hey, man, we are experiencing the joy of your shy right now, right. man. So it's a beautiful thing to say that yeah man brothers will be talking for hours and we hell going, yeah man. yeah for real that brings a smile on the lord's face to hear something <laughs> like that man God. and that's taking it with cheer being cheerful yeah, as we bro. offer up a sacrifice man I, I had to bring that point out man. God, so, God, God, you did right. this is spirit is like the wind that's right that's right, that's right. This is the book of giant chapter 1 verse 16 do not err my beloved brother every good gift and every perfect gift is from above this word that we have y'all it's immortal and it comes from a completely different dimension, man. 
even having faith in something that comes from a completely different dimension. That's why it's a few of us and as many of those that are without. Because we have something that comes from the heavens, man. We got the spirit of the Lord within us, man. That's the spirit of the Lord. He ain't worried about this place down here, man. But he's worried about the men that he has sent out to preach his name because that's coming. You know, we say the only way that we can call out in his name with this trumpet, man, he had to depart with us this knowledge in order for us to sing this song, man. Mm -hmm. What we're given right now was a, what's it called, an SOS or a beacon. Mm -hmm. You know, when that beacon is there, it pretty much when a beacon of light is shining down, it makes it easier for that um, pilot mm -hmm. to, to fly down, mm -hmm. to navigate, mm -hmm. man. And we're those beacons giving that SOS unto the Heavenly Father, crying out to him, and he sees it. Mm -hmm. He sees it. He's going to purify us, but he sees it, and then he's going to make his approach. He's going to come. All right, hey, just like Noah did, man. Noah was down there for 100 plus years, cursing their asses out, man. Mm -hmm. And what afterward, he, he was building a boat at the same time, mm -hmm. man. And we're going to go back to that too, man, through the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it all goes into the spirit of the Lord dwelling within us. All right? Come. Go ahead, I. It says, uh, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, variables, variables, God, yep. Neither shadow of you. Turning. That's right. So it talks about how this word comes from above, man. It comes up from the Heavenly Father. And it's a very precious thing that we have that within us, man. All right. 144,000 is a very small number to 7 billion, man. All right. Even the one third is a small number to two third, man, because it's one third out of Israel, not the world. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's only going to be a small uh, sanctuary mm -hmm. that's going to be able to stand when, it, when, he, when, it, when that day comes, as we read in Matthew, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. All right. And, um, the next one, uh, we was going to get back into the ark, how he dwells. Uh, John, the 20th chapter. Did you want to get that? John, the 20th chapter. Yeah, yeah let's get that. Let's uh, get that. Yeah, and then, you said what? I think you wanted Matthew too, then. Matthew was well about being on the boat. Okay. That's right. That's right. Um, Genesis 7, and we can end it off on Revelation, the seven chapters, mm -hmm. the um, last two verses. I got that mm -hmm. All right, Con, brother. All right, this uh John 20, and we'll start at 11. Slock it, brother. Slock it. First, um, so I just, uh, let's bring that out in Matthew first, right. and then we can jump back to that gotcha. part there. Okay, um, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 8. Um, I'm going to start at verse 20, 23. Okay. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold. And, and, and them little, them, them, it says his disciples followed him. Even little stuff right there is mm -hmm. big things, man. Because he said his disciples followed him on the boat. Mm -hmm. All right? And a boat is something that you use to, to, to get across danger and waters to mm -hmm. get to another location, man. Mm -hmm. All sure. right, so exactly. And Yahabashah was our shepherd and we're the sheep. And they followed him right there on the mm -hmm. boat. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just wanted to bring that little quick point out. You got it, brother. <laughs> Verse 24, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, mm -hmm. and so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Verse 25, and his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Yeah, man, they, they, I mean, you know, you got the Messiah on the boat with you, man. All right, but you know, when you go through that tribulation, mm -hmm. that can even cause wise men Hell to forget yeah. certain things. Yeah. If you don't use that knowledge and wisdom that you have right. to yeah. keep you stable, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. even David committed a dog. David went off, man. Mm -hmm. He was the, a righteous in the, eye, in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Hey, it, it, it's written in Syriac, I'm, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 7. We don't got to get it, huh. but it talks about when you're going through adversity, consider, because mm -hmm. he had set the good things in adversity you know, two and two separate from each other, but you got to go through it, man. Mm -hmm. It says, in the day of prosperity, consider. Mm -hmm. All right? Just like an adversity, man. That's why we got to continue to rely on calling on the name of the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. Even when our back's against the wall. The brother brought up the beautiful example, Daniel, the lion's mm -hmm. den. Lions ain't and ate for days. Man, what? And they purpose and, he, and the king had at that time he purposely did that so they can they can devour Daniel quickly. That's crazy, right. Man. That's right. Mm -hmm. the yeah, that's right. Man, I was like that was a spirit. That's right. And they was in the fire, <laughs> in man. The fire. They yeah. was literally in the baptism, man. Yeah. You yeah. know, and who was with them in the fire? Y'all was shy, yeah. man. Yeah. It says, is there a fourth person that's down there with them? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but that was the spirit of the Lord. Kinda. And that's why we want to get this in, in Matthew, man. Because the Lord, as he was with Meshach, Shagrat, and Abednego, as he was with Daniel in the lions, then which closed the mouth of the lions, he's with us today, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, we read earlier. He said, I and my father shall make our abode with you, man. All right. That's why we got to constantly be in good cheer because the most holiest of holies of spirits dwells within you. Mm -hmm. You know? Go ahead. Man, I, I, how you think we got out of the world? Man, boy. Hey, That's we, miracle. If, if it wasn't for the Lord, hey, you know, some man. of us were so deep into the world. Mm -hmm. and if it wasn't for the Lord, mm -hmm. we couldn't have made it out of there. That's, That's right. true. Yeah. That's right. That's true. And that, was right. A, that was a hell of a fight, man. Yeah, and, it and, is. And, you know, so, and they just were like, man, there's no other answer. Well, you high by shot, man. Right. I made it out of that world. Mm -hmm. 
because of your hot body right. shot because I couldn't walk away from that on my that's own. Right. Yeah, kind. Right because a lot of brothers gave up a lot of yeah. worldly shit or whatever, and that like yeah. what I'm saying. Hard, yeah, kind, kind. Huh? That's right. He was the example for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Out. He the one there to show us the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always talk about him um, out there in Dallas. We've been saying this lately. You know, if you're walking through thick snow. You know, a lot of times you have that, you walk through the tracks that's already, for example, uh, you know, the uh, Spirit had Apostle uh, Nahar, who's our head, you know, helped head the way. Yeah, I was trying to paved the way ultimately, but pretty much we already have tracks that we follow because it made it easier for us to follow it. Uh, There's already footprints that are right there, man. Uh, we just got to follow the path. And uh, it's narrow as hell, you know, but hey, those footprints are there, man. Uh -huh. It's up to you if you want to follow that path, but that path where those footprints are leading down looks eerie and gloomy. Mm -hmm. You know, Ezra talks about fire on one side and water on the mm -hmm. other side, mm -hmm. which are two devices of baptism. Mm -hmm. But hey, we got those feet ways to cross to, mm -hmm. and then he talks about at the end of it is a city that's built full of all good things, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. All right. And sure saying that same chapter, that same chapter they said that one man entering in, but one by one. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's the spirit <laughs> that he said that, that about the foot, the foot tracks, man. Yeah. Because I always speak about the word mm -hmm. follow is an action word mm -hmm. and you know you got those certain some christians out there they follow by the word of mouth uh -huh. yeah. so when you follow in your house with shy gotta actually be by the footsteps yeah. man uh -huh. and, and when it's winter outside and you tr and somebody's footprints is already deep in the snow it actually make your feet make warmer yeah so, yeah there you go you know that's you serious gotta follow your house by action man that's right and when, mm -hmm. and when they you know in the, in the christian in the uh, christian church they say what would jesus do mm -hmm. what would your house with shy do that's so right. you yeah. gotta follow him hey you go mm -hmm. let him always keep that in mind that's man. right brother uh -huh. that's right i so lock your car nah, you, go ahead brother go ahead brother this is first john first john chapter two verse six he that saith he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked that's right so you got to walk the walk that's right hey you can't just talk you can't just be running mm -hmm. hey what's the scripture say uh matthew the 15th chapter mm -hmm. these people honor me with their lips but they heart right. is far right. from me right. that's right hey, this, hey, the, hey the, the scriptures they say you got to meditate on this a uh, day and night mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. so hey the lord don't just want to you can't just talk it man right. I'm, a, I'm a i believe mm -hmm. in the I'm, you got to show it because look it, uh love love, yeah. is love is an action yeah. word man love is an action there you go it's an action word you know and hey, man, the ones that show that love are going to be the ones that end up making themselves a sacrifice, man. Right. You know, they didn't just went back then. You had to offer sacrifice, man. You didn't, and you weren't supposed to be like, yeah, I did, but lie about it. No, you actually had to do it or you just went to death, man. Mm -hmm. And when you did it, you had to do it with the, with the goodness of your heart, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what we do out here, man. Right, All right, you got that in, mid, um, in Matthew? Yeah, hey, I'm still in Matthew. Come, come. Verse 26, and he saith unto them, why are ye? Well, I'm going to go back at 25. Come. Um, Verse 25, and his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Verse 26, and he saith unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Yeah, man. And you can imagine Yahweh already being a man that didn't really get too much rest, mm -hmm. too much sleep. A lot of people in Christian churches think he's, oh, why are you fearful? Mm -hmm. Why are you so fearful? No, he probably cursed their asses out, man. Mm -hmm. Like, nigga. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, again, I don't want to, you know, but pretty con, much, con. you know, like, we, we, in, in today's term, like, today's yeah, term. We, yeah, we know what you're talking about. Because like, <laughs> somebody on the camera, everybody see? Like, nah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Bro, I'm on the boat with yeah. you, man. Yeah, relax. You think you, if the boat flip over, I'm on it with you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is he con. not the son of the most high? Yeah. And did he not have a job that he do that he stressed to them, man? So you mm -hmm. can imagine, but we also apply this today within our lives, man. Mm -hmm. All right? When we go through certain things, especially when our hell breaks loose, man. Uh, God. You know, Yahweh Shah is with us. That's why it's written, I'm with you always, even until the ends of the earth, man. God. All right? And what is that boat used for? To go across those waters, man. All right? Hey, man, hey, water. It talked about how there was a tempest that it rose. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can imagine there wasn't just no wind. It was lightning, mm -hmm. thunder. The rain was probably flying sideways, Con. man. And if I can say this, like, yeah, you see man. how like, mm -hmm. you see how it is now? Like, imagine just, like, hell, like, you know what I mean? Water looks scary, man. You yeah, know what I mean? It's at night. It should look scary. Con, that's real talk. I can't swim. <laughs> hey, man. But, but, hey, real talk. But, hey, who needs to swim when you can walk on water? There you go, huh? You know? Yeah. Hey, and, it, and the scriptures talk about how, you know, Hey, the, we mentioned it earlier that they shall do greater things than I. Mm -hmm. All right, so best believe miracles are coming too, man. Yeah. You know, miracles mm -hmm. are coming, man. Yahweh Shah's presence is felt, but he's going to make it even more known because Psalms 110 got to be fulfilled, man. Yep. Thy people shall be willing <laughs> in the day of thy power, power, man. Yep. We're going to be willing to, to listen after they see the example. Like, oh, yep. shoot. 
Yep. Dang. Yeah. But it's going to be in dangerous times where all that stuff is going to take place too. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is going to keep us comforted so much that we're going to we're not going to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's training us up for right now. As he was training those 12 that you're reading about right there, mm -hmm. he's training us up right now, man, because he's with us, man. Uh. Yahweh shines the bridge. Yahweh shines the cover. He's the bridge over the water. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's it on that point right there. We can put up in John uh, the 20th chapter, mm -hmm. going into the ark uh. and how that represents that bridge. Uh. This is uh, John 20 and 11. It said the very stood without the scepter, weeping, and as she wept, she stuck down and looked into the scepter. Uh-huh. And see if two angels in white city. Two angels were sitting, man. Go ahead, brother, go ahead. <laughs> the one at the head and the other at the feet. So, brothers, just imagine your house shy where he was laying and where he was set at. Yep. You know, again, they seen him get set there. Mm -hmm. The way he was set, you know, his body was gone. Mm -hmm. But there was an angel that was standing where Yahweh's head was, mm -hmm. and there was an angel standing where Yahweh's foot was. Mm. Go ahead. It says, where the body of Yahweh had lain. Where the body of Yahweh had lain. We read in Exodus 25 earlier going into the Ark of the Testimony. All right, and when he continue, it says um, how there were two cherubims that were standing there mm -hmm. with their wings up. Mm -hmm. All right, on one side and the other. Mm -hmm. And inside of the Ark of the Covenant, what do you have? You have the rod of Aaron that mm -hmm. budded. All right, you have the you have the law, yep, the stone and the tablets, and then you have the manna, yep. which all represent Yahweh Shai spiritually, mm -hmm. man. It's the word. Mm -hmm. I come in the volume of the book, mm -hmm. the staff that comforts us mm -hmm. that David talks about in Psalms 23. Mm -hmm. And also too, the manna from heaven that John talks about, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. So Yahweh Shai is there. And everywhere that they travel to, who are the ones that was bearing the ark welcome? Mm -hmm. It was the priests. Yep. Just like how we bear it, man. Yep. All right, and when those angels that came down, when Mary walked up in there, she saw those two angels that were standing there. All right, which shows you Yahweh Shai represent that ark, man. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Shai spirit represents us, so all that is within us, man. Mm -hmm. And also, too, we're a, hey, we ain't nothing our righteousness as of a filthy rag, but through our trial of faith, man, we're made precious vessels unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, we made precious, man. Mm -hmm. So the Heavenly Father, the Lord is with us, man. All right, and um, that's why, and that, that's it on that one. Um, that's why I wanted that in um, Genesis, the seventh chapter. Mm -hmm. Whoever can pull that one up, and we can end it off on Revelation chapter seven. The last one, Bob Kishan. Yeah, Bob Kishan, get him. You know, I get that Revelation 7. Okay, Khan, Khan. Somebody Somebody get Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, whoever Khan, got it. You got it, Khan, yeah. Khan. You want me to start from the top? Yeah, uh, Khan, because this is going into, you know, what, what the Lord instructed for Noah. Go ahead. Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house unto the ark. Mm -hmm. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Hey, and hey. Hey, Noah, Noah fits our description too through the spirit, man. All right. Hey, just like Noah was the prophet back then. Hey, we're the prophets here right now, man. All right. Go ahead. Right? Verse 2. It says, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, mm -hmm. the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean mm -hmm. by two, the male and his female. Go ahead. Verse 3. Of fowls also of the air mm -hmm. by sevens, the male and the female to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Go ahead. Verse 4. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days, forty nights. Go ahead, which is water. Con. All right, which again, we talked about the, the ominous, like the ominous look water has when you can't see the end of it, man. Uh, All right, the whole earth was flooded, man. <laughs> there was nothing that was out there. The whole earth was flooded, man. Go ahead, brother. Bob, what's up? Well, you really, when you really think about it, man, that's deep, man. Yeah. That in itself is deep, yep. man. But at the whole earth. That's right. That's right. It was deep, no pun intended. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Water. <laughs> that's the, that's the example the Lord left. That's right. right. For, for people to look back on, like, hey, straight up. You know, that's why, you know, a lot of our people forgot who Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is. They spirit know, man. Mm -hmm. And he gonna remind them. He gonna right. remind them, that's right. In that day, they shall know that I am the Lord, as that's the scriptures right. say. Go ahead, brother. It says, continuing on in verse 4, in every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. Go ahead, everything's destroyed, go ahead. Verse 5, and Noah did according to unto all that the Lord commanded him. He fulfilled his will. What did he do? He built. He built the ark. Uh, gotcha. We're spiritually building the ark right now, man. All right, we represent the temple. What are we doing? We're building. That's where the word edification goes into, man. 
We're constantly building, constantly building. Why? Because the Lord told us to. Just like he told Noah. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. There you go. And, what, and as he was 600 years old and the water flooded, the Lord had commanded Moses and his family to get in the ark. And they were protected. All right. Now, again, that word ark goes into a bridge. All right. And just like how the word ark goes into a bridge and is used as something to get you from one point to another. All right. Hey, man, Yahweh Shai is the ark, just like we all um, read in John 20. All right. Yahweh Shai represents that ark. With his spirit in us, man, we can go over waters and so forth, man. What did Yahweh Shai do with Peter, man? Peter asked Yahweh Shai if he could walk on the water with him. Yahweh Shai said, come on. And Peter what? He walked on the water afterwards. Right after the wind hit and he sunk. All right. Only difference is, man, we ain't supposed to let that wind shake us up. We're supposed to continue to walk on that water and be on that water because the Lord was with us. Just like he was with Noah. And the only way to do it is through faith, like the brother said, man. You got to have faith that he's with you, man, that you, you can be on those waters. Because those waters are dangerous, man. But the Lord is with us. And we can end it off on um, Revelation, the seventh chapter. Bobby can saw the last two verses. All right, this is uh, Revelation, uh, the seventh chapter, verse uh, 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, mm -hmm. and the third part of the moon. And this is going into the judgment that the Lord is going to bring, man. It's going to be a very uh, devastating day. Mm -hmm. All right. It's going to be a lot worse than the earth being flooded with water. All right. It's going to be with, you know, America's going to be done with fire. But also there's going to be water in certain places too. When the earth shakes, man, that'll cause tsunamis to get up in there, yeah. man. It's going to be evil on all sides that hit Volcano the face of the earth. Eruptions. Volcano yeah. eruptions, nuclear missiles, all these things. Chariots. The, ch the chariots of the Lord, the angels. Man, bro, that's why, again, in Malachi 3, it said, who shall stand in that day? Yeah. You got all that going on, what? Yeah, Habakkuk, or Habakkuk also mentioned that, too. He's talking about, he's like, uh, he's like, pretty much broken prayer. He's like, dang, Lord, was all angry with the... That's uh, right, yeah. with the rivers, yeah, Habakkuk 3. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's in the third, it's in the third. And the reason why this is going to be just, you know, that, that greatest day ever, because you got to remember, man, it's the generation who... Who has something to do with our Lord being Straight crucified? Up, you know, our people. Straight up. Hey, you know, you know the, the damn Romans. All right, mm -hmm. the scriptures say every eye shall see him, even they right. who pierced them. That's right. Up. Hey, so that 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 blood you said, let it be upon us in our generation. It you is. got what you asked for. You got what you asked for. Beautiful man. Con the water, brother. Right. This is uh, I'm gonna start from the top. This uh, Revelations uh, uh, like it. This Revelations seven and twelve. It said and and the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the light likewise. Con, con. That's Revelation like 7, right? It's all good. Hold on. Okay, I got you. Con. This is uh, Revelation 7 and 16, Shalakia. It's cool because that's still important, because we went into the destruction. And it shows you how fearful, man, why you got to fear the Lord, man? Why he wants us to fear him, bro. Because that day is coming, that it's going, it, 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 it's written up in so Daniel it that it's, like it shall burn like an oven and it shall not be as any day that the earth is ever bore witness to, man. You know, you got it out. This Revelation 7 and 16, they shall hunger no more. And this is going into when salvation comes. And this doesn't mean that you're in the kingdom, you're not going to be eating nothing. But when you go into the curses, it talks about how we were going to, we were going to be hungry, man. You know, we were going to, you know, it talks about how our women were going to come against us. You know, we were going to have an astonishment of heart. All right. And then we were going to be in hunger and in thirst. All right. So Yahweh Shah is pretty much talking about how we're not going to be hungry in that day. Not with that we're not going to eat, but we're not going to be afflicted and in the lowest state of hunger no more, man. And ultimately, the spirit of the Lord is going to be with us, man. Because that's the ultimate force of nourishment is the word. That's going to literally dwell within us. Go ahead. I it says, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst anymore. Uh-huh. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Go ahead, man. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, Go ahead. and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. He shall lead us in the fountains of water, man. Hey, Yahweh shines the ark, bro. Yahweh shines the ark. We was able to cross through the water just through trust and faith in the Heavenly Father, and that's what he wants us to do right now, man. Just like we was on the, just like, hey, we're on the boat right now. All right? We're on the boat right now. Yahweh Shai is with us. Yahweh Shai was because of Yahweh Shai. He did it, man. Wow. I exactly. can I bring out this last scripture? Go ahead, brother. It's Revelations <laughs> 12 
and 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and their, mm. and they love not their lives unto death, man. That's right. So Yahweh Shah, man, he was that ultimate sacrifice. You know, Yahweh Shah is the reason, you know, that, that, that plug, that connect, man. That's right. That's right. You know, that got us back right with the heavenly father, That's man, right. and it's because of him, you know, and the things that he did, all right, while he was here, man, that, 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 that led us to, you know, having faith, man. That's right, man. You know, hoping to, you know, fulfill, you know, what we need to fulfill, man, to, to, to make everything back right again, man. That's right, I, that's right, brother. And hey, you want to come? Gone. That's right. That's right. Gone, gone. Yeah, we're going to close it out on that, man. Hey, Lord, when it was edifying, a lot of beautiful points brought up, man. Very glad multiple brothers was able to come in and join, you know, the water for you brothers on the comment board that left the, left the scriptures and everything. You know, hey, just keep fighting. We almost out of here. Keep believing, man. Hey, man, as your house, I was on the boat with those men back then. He's on the boat with us today. All right. Hey, he's with us across these waters, man. He's going to lead us through them. All right. So we're going to end it off on that. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. We want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. Yahweh, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Bahashim, Kodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of great most on that real well. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom. 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 Bad Baba. Baby. Stick it to him.